And you're welcome back again. I'm very excited because we have someone very special here with us today for SME. Now on SME this week, we are joined by luxury leather goods entrepreneur Zainab Aliu. She's a UK qualified fellow of the Association of Chartered and Certified Accountants uh, with over 15 years of experience in the energy sector, by the way. Now she's turned CEO and creative director of Abu. Abu is a stylish lecture, uh, leather luxury brand um, founded in 2017. Zainab is right here with us. You are welcome. Thank you for good to have me. you here good and good to see all of your products all here i'm very very interested in what you do but first i wanted to say you had 15 years of experience in the energy sector and now you're into leather yes wow do, yes. do you feel like you left anything behind absolutely not um i think when i started my career as an accountant um i felt like a fish out of water really? often at times yes i was trained i was qualified i'm you know I did it for 15 years, rose to the highest ranks of my career, and I felt there was something missing. Mm. My sisters are creatives, and I felt like what happened to me, yeah. stuck in a white collar job, and um, I was looking for my own thing. And thankfully, I found my passion oh, in fantastic. leather goods in 2017. Does it pay the bills, though? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, okay. that's why I left the job to focus <laughs> on this full time. Interesting. And yeah. that's what people want to hear on the SME segment because they like to take from examples of people who we bring on here to see, hey, if I've got a passion, maybe I can explore it and perhaps maybe make money from it. And that's exactly what you're doing. So let's start from the beginning. 2017, you started. How exactly did you start? What capitals did you put in? Okay, so a friend came to visit from the UK and she was looking for gifts, items to take back home. So we went to the Lecky Crafts Market in Jack on Day and they had a lot of arts and crafts and I saw leather goods. Mm -hmm. that, and I was fascinated that they were made in Nigeria yeah. and we had those kinds of leathers. So I started exploring and looking for a shape of a bag that I wanted and I couldn't find any. So I decided to sketch something quickly on a uh -huh. paper to explain to someone what, you wanted. what I wanted. And then from there I realized I could draw and you know I came home to my husband, told him, very excitedly that I had drawn a bag and I was going to go pick it up in like a week's time. Uh -huh. So I was very excited, got the product, but they had mixed my yeah. dimensions and leather combinations. Yeah. So again, round two, we tried again, but I sat with him that day, the craftsman, and we came up with a bag that I was in love with. And I just thought, I you know what, I can actually living. do this. <laughs> Maybe this is my creative wow. thing that I've been looking for. And then there was a leather fair about a month or two later. Mm -hmm. And when I went, I listened to speakers, you know, the Bank of Industry, and I realized, like, it was a multi-billion industry, and mm -hmm. I thought I could definitely key into it. Wow. And then I saw the quality of work by other leather designers, and I was very excited. So that was how the fire started in me. Wow, very yes. interesting story there. I want to take a look at this bag here. First off, this is made in Nigeria, everybody. Believe it or not, it is actually Abu. Now, the name, first off, is very, very interesting. It sounds very, I don't know, je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about that and how you came up about your branding and how you manage uh, all of this branding. Okay, so Abu is actually a spin-off of my name. Um, my mom fondly called me Zainabu Abu. Okay. And so we played it around with the um, spelling to come up with Abu. And people always think, is it French? That mm. it's well, it is spelled curiosity. with an X at the end. Yes. So it, it, it's a conversation starter and yeah, people find it interesting and question whether it's French or Nigerian and the whole dream from the beginning was to be a global brand uh -huh. and yeah, from the name to the design, logos, everything, yeah, we had that in mind. It does seem so. It, it is definitely global. Now, um, let's talk about export for a Nigerian business. People always talk about how hard it is to push their brands or their products outside of Nigeria. How easy has it been for Abu? Okay, so thankfully I've been very lucky um, in terms of helpers along the way. Um, for a start, I think for my vision, like I said from the beginning, I knew I wanted to be global from day one. Mm. I didn't want to just be a Nigerian brand. In fact, I wanted to change the narrative around Nigerian and African brands. So I wanted to be out there as a global player showing the good things that could come out of Nigeria. and. Um, with that in mind, I think once you put it out to the universe mm -hmm. and you walk towards it, mm -hmm. things just align um, by the grace of God. And when you, when you have a quality product, it sells, itself. Um, it sells itself, people are interested. I was fortunate enough to um, showcase in New York oh. about how many months after I started my business. Yes, I was a, a selected by She Trades and I went to New York and there I made my first 
international orders. So let's talk about networking in this business. Mm. It's one thing to have a talent. It's another thing to be able to put it together to make a, a merchandising and run products. It's yet another thing to be able to get the right connection, the right people to sell to or help you push your brand. So how have you managed that? And this is for the benefit of everybody who's watching, who's thinking they can do the same. So honestly, I think fundamentally when you have something quality, like a quality statement pieces that showcase your talent, I think um, people notice mm. and they reach out to you. So like I said, I, I, I was lucky enough to um, be on the She Trades program. They had a training program, training female entrepreneurs about how to um, scale up. And then we had exhibitions and you applied for these mm -hmm. positions and I got mm -hmm. selected. I was lucky enough to be selected and off to New York I went. And once I got out there, I think people in Nigeria actually just thought, oh my God, she's mm. global now. So more mm. people came in and wanted to be associated. So once you put in the quality work out there, I think people recognize mm. and come, are, are drawn towards you. But not to, not to um, discredit the fact of family and friends. Of yeah. course, you start with your nearest and dearest. You, you know, ring in their ears, this is what I'm doing. And at first it was a side hustle and you know, it was something I did alongside my nine to five. And now doing it full time is like, being deliberate, intentional, planning, mm. and just pushing wow. the brand. Yes. Uh, that, is, that is absolutely very, very interesting. International brand here, Abu, fantastic. Um, now, do you work alone or do you have a staff strength of people who help you out? Oh. Have you employed that person, the first person who made that bag for you? Have you employed that person already? Oh, my goodness, yes. So my, my, one of my artisans is still with me. From He started from day one. Oh. So I have third generation artisans that um, I got from northern Nigeria. That was one of my challenges when I started looking for the right team with the, not just the skills, but also like the mindset and values mm -hmm. for what I wanted for my brand. So that was a challenge. It took me almost a year wow. from when I registered the company to actually finding my Did team. Did you have to train them or they came with their skills? So they came with their skills, but I had to tweak it. So exactly. we use, we use our signature, our signature construction mm -hmm. is stitchless. So we use rivets to I see hold that. the bags together. I see that here too. And yeah, we had to train them in that. I had to train them in mm. that. And um, yeah. Uh, your, your, your clients, your, your customer, your target, it seems female mostly. Or do you do stuff for male as well? This is a wallet I could it's, use. That's a card, a passport holder. Yeah. So we on, have a passport talking. holder. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have card holders. And hopefully um, in 2022, we'll reveal some products for men. Okay. We actually have briefcases as well, which I didn't bring here today. Mm. Um, but you can um, find them on our social media pages or our website. So, yeah. yeah. Don't worry, we haven't left the men Yeah, behind. please. We, we <laughs> love good and shiny things as well. Yes. Um, you couldn't have gotten this far without challenges, uh, especially in a country like Nigeria, where <laughs> everybody just want to take from you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm supposing that you must have surmounted some of these challenges. What were they? How did you uh, uh, get over them? Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, starting out, the main challenge was finding the right team of mm -hmm. people to work with, honestly. Um, you have people who are so okay with managing or mediocrity, and that was not what I was about. I was about excellent quality and attention to detail. So it took a while to find the right set of people mm -hmm. that I would work with. And... Um, some people sort of undermine or mm -hmm. look down at you when you're a woman and feel like, oh, yeah, you can't afford this or you don't have the skills to mm -hmm. go about um, running a business. Um, but I was able to overcome. And like I said, by the time you start and prove your worth and know, mm -hmm. you, you know, show what, that you know what you're doing and what you're made from, then the respect mm -hmm. comes and people want to be associated other things was like raw materials yeah. so where do you get that from um, you, do you have a is it foreign is it local so i source my leathers mainly from europe and the middle east um you can actually source leather in nigeria mm -hmm. but again we import okay so it's it's quite sad it's a sad situation in the sense that we have amazing skin one of the best skins in africa mm -hmm. because of our tropics and weather so it's very lean the animals are lean and the mm -hmm. skin's not so fat that's what you need isn't but it but then we semi-process and we export mm. to um, Europe, Spain, Italy, China, India, and they process it and we re-import it mm -hmm. within Nigeria. However, my suede, which I use on the inside of the bags, yeah, okay. I source from Kano, so oh. at least I can so get is... I can get consistent supply uh -huh. of the Hang suede. On. So what you mean is this is a different leather and yes. that's a different leather, absolutely, uh, put together yes. to make what yes. we have here. Suede is the inside of, of the leather, is it? It's the inside of the animal skin, of the, animal the flesh skin. side, yes. So that's where it comes from. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. But you've mentioned the words that you keep dropping, export uh, from other countries, uh, leather from other countries, um, uh, the, the, the event you were at, makes it seem that this brand is expensive. Just how cheap, and that's deliberate, is it? So um, our products start, well, our handbags start from 55,000 naira. Jesus, sorry. <laughs> I almost dropped it. <laughs> and all the way to about, a I think our briefcase is the most expensive item um, of 200,000. So as you can see, quality is what we're quality about. Quality is, yeah. From yeah. our hardware to the detail and mm -hmm. everything, we're about quality premium, exquisitely curated yeah. leathers that you wouldn't find anywhere else. So to the one person out there who has such a skill as well, what you have yourself, if you remember, you only just had it from drawing and then realizing that you could do this for a living, what would you tell that person? And if you could, would you offer training to these people? So um, I've had a lot of inquiries for training and it's something I'm currently looking towards okay. because one of my ethos is giving back and empowering people That's good. and making impact. And I want to leave a legacy, so absolutely. Um, in terms of starting something, following your dreams, I'd say that, you know, preparation goes a really, really long way. Um, when you know what you're after, you, you, you can write a business plan, have a vision mm -hmm. where you want to see your business going. And once you're not just having it in your head, actually mm -hmm. writing it out and walking through, That's good. then it makes it more achievable. And more then you can tangible. break it down into tasks, yeah. actions, and how do I get there? Because when you know where you're going, then with the right steps and mm. grit, perseverance, resilience. Business in Nigeria is not a joke. It's yeah, not for the faint-hearted. I, I, I say know. entrepreneurship <laughs> say it is again a sport. for everybody in the back. It's an extreme Zainab. sport. That's what I say. Thank you very you know? much. It's fantastic. Are you hungry? Yes. Oh wow! It then come on over. Amazing. Let's give you something okay. to eat.